Welcome to How to Cook That. I'm Anne Reardon and today we're going to make five different gifts that you can give away to people who love food, which is pretty much everyone. The first one we're going to make is chocolate bark. This is such an easy one to make and it's well loved by everyone who receives it. What you need to do is spread out some tempered white chocolate onto some non-stick baking paper in a thin smooth layer. Then let that set. And once it's firm, pour over some tempered milk chocolate and spread it out in an even layer over the top. Now, before that sets, move on to sprinkling your choice of decorations over the top. I'm using blanched almonds, roast coconut strips, dried goji berries, pistachio nuts, and freeze-dried strawberries. You can use whatever you like. Fruit and nut combinations are pretty popular, but kids, if you're making it for them, they tend to like things like candies on top and tiny teddies and lots of more sugar, more sweet stuff added to the top there. For a different style of chocolate bark, you can pick out different colours. I've got two colours here that are in pistachios, that pistachio green and that purpley colour, and I've used an oil-based food colouring to colour some white chocolate. Spread out a rectangle of milk chocolate and then before it sets add one colour and then the other dolloping it on top there and then just mix it through. Then before it sets add some pistachios on top and you can of course do that with whatever colours you like. Once they're starting to firm up you can slice them into blocks and then package them as blocks like that or you can break them or cut them into shards and put them into smaller box, just putting lots of slices in there. And they make just beautiful looking and delicious gifts. Next, super easy again, we have candy cane hearts. So what you need to do is take two candy canes of equal size and place them next to each other on a lined baking tray and then get a cake pop stick. You need a paper one, not a plastic one and put that down the middle. And then place them in a hot oven for just a few moments, like about 10, 20 seconds. If you leave them there too long, they're going to turn into liquid, so keep an eye on them. Pull them out and have a feel. Now, if they are warm enough to bend, that's great. These ones are very slightly softened, but they're not quite warm enough to bend, so I'm going to put them in for 10 seconds longer. There we go. That's much better. Now pinch them together onto the stick and use a knife or your fingers just to make them a little bit of a plumper heart shape. You'll notice these are still holding their shape. They're warm, but they're not too hot to touch. If you pull them out of the oven and they look like they're liquid, don't touch them. You've made them too hot and you'll burn yourself. Once you're happy with the shapes of your hearts, you can leave those to cool and go firm again. And then you simply fill each heart with some tempered white chocolate and then sprinkle it with the decorations of your choice before that chocolate sets. And then you could wrap those individually in cellophane or if you want to serve them at an event, just put them into a little jar that you can serve them in. Another easy gift is the savoury sweet combination of decorated pretzel sticks or you can use bread sticks if you can't get the pretzel sticks. All you need to do is put your tempered chocolate into a cup Dip the stick in on one end and then tap it to get rid of any excess chocolate. Quickly roll it in your chosen topping. This is just a coloured sugar and then place it to one side to set. Now if you're using something heavier like these M&Ms, dip one side in, then put it on the paper to set and add more on the top by arranging them by hand so that they look pretty. If you just keep dipping it, they're going to fall off because they're too heavy. Now you can use your imagination of what you want on them. You could use sprinkles or why not use crushed candy canes for a minty flavour and that Christmassy sort of look depending on the time of year. And then you can just box those up once they're set. Next we have an M&M dispenser. Now I first started making these when I was studying. They are a great low cost gift. They look impressive, they take a bit of time and you'll need some tools to make them, but they don't cost much at all. You'll need one long square shaped piece of wood. And then you need to measure the width of your wood. Mine is 1.75 centimetres wide. And then multiply whatever your width is by five. Measure that distance along your wood and draw a line. Saw that through and then repeat that until you have 13 pieces of wood that same length. Then measure your width again if you can't remember what it is and multiply that by two and mark that off and you want to cut two of those. Then for our last piece of wood, you need to multiply your width by 10 this time, an easy one, and measure that across. Now take one piece of wood 
and place it across one end of that and then one of your longer bits and put it along the wood and mark where that comes to. Place a piece of wood across and mark that again. Now those two marks there, you don't want to cut them all the way through, just about two thirds of the way so that it looks like this. Then place a chisel on top and bang it with a hammer and chisel out that piece. Then sand off any rough edges from all of your pieces. And now we're ready to put it together. Take five of the pieces and using wood glue, glue each one to the next one so you end up with a nice square. Take another piece and glue it on two sides and add it on top to one side, going across the ones that are on the bottom layer, not in the same way. That's going to give it more strength. Add another one right next to it, this time only putting glue on the bottom. Wipe off any excess glue there. We don't want any that's oozing out. Then rest your longest piece next to it. We don't want to glue this into place. Just place it there. And then add one more bit in front of that, only gluing the bottom. And then one more bit on the edge, gluing the side and the bottom so that that's firmly in place. And then quickly remove your long piece so it doesn't get stuck by any little bits of glue. To make the top layer, Arrange the pieces that are left so that the two little ones are in the middle row so that you get a square hole in the middle. Glue them all together just like we did with the bottom layer and just leave them flat on the paper there. I'm not putting them on top yet. We'll let them all glue those two sections and let them dry first. Take a jar that you like the look of. This one's just a jam jar and use a knife to pierce the top to make like a cross shape and then bend those corners of metal upwards. Place it over your wood and use something firm to push the metal open into the hole. Don't use your finger here because that cut metal will be sharp and I don't want you to cut your finger. So just push it down so that you get a nice open spot there. Add some glue to the underside and then put that into place and rest something heavy on top while you wait for that to dry. Once it's dry, we need to add some nails and they're going to stop the middle bit from going all the way through and falling out of our dispenser. Place it in the gap and line it up so that that cut out chunk is lined up with one side so that it's open on one side and mark where the edge of that meets on the other end. Then slide it along so that that missing chunk is in the center and mark where that is on the other side. Take it out and add your nails to each end on the line that you drew. I'm using rounded nails, but if you can't get those, just normal ones are fine. Now when you put it in and slide it from side to side, you can see it stops at just the right points. Grab a candle and just rub some wax on the edges. This just makes it run smoothly. You don't want to have heaps of wax on it, so if you've got too much on it, just rub it off. And then you just want just a really thin layer. It just aids it in running smoothly through there. Add some glue to the two outer pieces, being very careful not to get any on the middle bit. And add your top layer across the top. Once that's dry, pour M&Ms into your jar, turn the wood upside down, screw it on and then flip the whole thing back the right way up. Now when you push the wood across, it releases some M&Ms. Pull it back so that more can fall into that hole and then push it across again. And it makes a great gift and as I said, it doesn't cost that much. All you've paid for is one piece of wood and you've got a jar that you've repurposed. Next we have chocolate puzzles. These are one of my favorite. They're so easy and super cute. Take a puzzle cutter. Now this is actually for cutting crusts off sandwiches and making them into cute shapes for little kids. But when I saw it, I of course thought of chocolate. So I'll see if I can find where I got this one from online and I'll link to it below if I can. Place it on some acetate or nonstick baking paper or foil and fill the opposite sides with tempered white chocolate. Once it's full, make sure it's going right into all those corners and then level off the top. Then add dark or milk chocolate to the other two pieces so you get that nice contrast in your puzzle. And then once it's all set, just push the pieces out of the cutter and you have a quick, cute little gift that you can give to someone. Subscribe to How to Cook That for more cakes, chocolates and desserts. Click here to go to the channel and check out more of my videos here for last week's video. Put all your requests in the comments below. Have a great week and I'll see you all on Friday.